Hello and today we will study about the heart sounds. Now, you might have heard the sound lub dub, lub dub, and there's slight little pause between every lub dub. Now, why these sounds are produced? These sounds are produced because of the closure of the walls. Now, whenever the AV valves are closed, the sound lub is produced, and whenever the semilunar walls are closed, the sound produced is dub. Now, the point is, whenever the walls are closed, sound is produced, and whenever the walls open, no sound is produced. This is because when the valves close, they strike each other and produce the vibration. This vibration is heard as a harsh sound. Normally, the sound is produced only before or after the sleep, and no sound is produced during the sleep or the die sleep, only before or after the sleep. Now, when we study about the harsh sounds, we can classify into four major types S1, S2, S3, and 4. And uh, we'll study the mechanics of every, every type of harsh sound along with their features and the site of location onto the chest. So first of all, we'll take a general review about the S1 sound. Now, this is the love sound and it's called the first heart sound and contributed by both the mitral wall and the tricuspid wall. And the main S1 sound is from the mitral wall because it's on the left side and left side creates a stronger push that pushes the blood to the whole body. So Hardest sound is produced by a mitral wall. Now, if you see the mechanics, how these sounds are produced, we'll come to know that at the beginning of the sisley, the sound is produced. As I already told, no sound is produced during the sisley or diastole, only at the beginning or the ending. So, this sound is produced at the beginning of the sisley. What happens is that AV valves closed. When these valves are closed, the vibration, this vibration generated, and this vibration is then shifted to the heart mass the myocardium and the vessels around the heart. So that results in adding effect of these vibrations and these vibrations finally come up to the chest. So that's how these vibrations are produced. Now these valves burst towards the atria. These valves are attached to the cordy tendon. Now they, they try to push it back and when these valves are pushed back in, towards the ventricle, another vibration is produced. So that's how uh, the sound S1 is produced and it's, it's a loud sound so it can be heard with the help of a stethoscope. Now if we see the features of this sound, we come to know that a sound has general features. So we'll discuss the main features of some general sound. First we say the time period. Now the time period is the time required for the sound to complete one cycle. And if you see the frequency of the sound, it is just the inverse of the time period. In simple words, frequency is in one second to a certain point, how many cycles are passing? This is the frequency of the sound. Now, if you, if you see the pitch of the sound, uh, pitch is the piercing of the sound. For example, the sound with the high pitch is very piercing, but the sound with the low pitch is not piercing. It's kind of heavy sound. And if you see the quality of sound, we can say the quality of sound could be whether rough, is it a rough sound, is it a smooth sound? And if you see the amplitude of the sound, it's the maximum displacement from the main position in the form of crest or in the form of trough. And if we see this intensity, it is explained in the forms of decibels. It means how loud your sound is. So in intensity is directly proportional to the amplitude scales. Now, if we have a sound like this and it has some amplitude, plus two here and minus two here. So if we take the square of both these terms, uh, we get plus four and plus four. So your intensity is always positive in terms of the sound like this. Features of S1 sound, we, we come to know that time period is long. If we see is existing for a longer period, the quality is soft. The sound is generally a soft one, pitch is low. If the pitch is low, the sound is not piercing to the ear and the frequency is between 40 to 80 cycles per second. We know that it's located at two different places on the chest. First one is over the fifth intercostal space, medial to the mid-clavicular line. This is the clavicle. And this is the mid-clavicular and medial to the mid-clavicular is the mitral area and where the apex beat is formed and also on the tricuspid area, fourth or fifth inter intercostal space beside the sternum. Now we come to know about the general, general view of S2 sound. It is the dub sound called the second heart sound and it's produced by the semilunar walls. Now these semilunar walls could be the aortic or pulmonary. 
See the mechanics how the sound is produced. The sound is produced at the end of the sizzling. Because of the closure of the pulmonary valves, like here's the pulmonary valve, when it closes, these valves are bulged towards the ventricle. Now, they don't have cordy tendony attached to them, so they have higher elastic recoil. They are automatically, automatically elastically recoiled and uh, reverberation is produced as a result. So these reverberations spread all along the heart to the myocardium, to the vessels around the heart, and finally up to the chest and is heard as a second heart sound. Now we can see the features of this second heart sound, how this second heart sound is. The time period is quite short as compared to the first one. If the time period is short, it must have a higher frequency. The quality is sharp. You can, it's, a, it's a crispy sound, you can hear it. The, the pitch is very high. It means it's piercing to your ears and the frequency is between 50 to 200 cycles per second. Now, why the frequency is high? Because these, these valves do not have cordy tendony attached to them. They have higher elastic recoil, so, so they tend to vibrate more and more. That's why frequency is high due to the tautness of these, of these valves and more elastic coefficient. Now you can see the site of location. This sound can be heard on the second intercostal space, besides sternum onto the left and besides sternum onto the right side. And these areas are pulmonic area and aortic area. Onto the left side, we have pulmonic and onto the right side, we have aortic. Whenever you try to differentiate between the two sounds, you can be misguided. Now, both sounds can be confusing, it seems, they seem, they seem quite quite similar. <clears throat> so the best way to differentiate between two 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 of the, uh, two of these sounds is to focus on carotid pulse while while you're listening to one of the sounds. Now you know there's a pulsation in the carotid artery like this. At one point, the pulsation rises, and at one point, this pulsation fades away. Now with one hand, you you focus on the carotid pulse, and the and simultaneously you try to hear the hard sounds. Whenever you hear the hard sound, when the carotid pulse is at the peak or is at the top, you are hearing the sound love. Whenever you're hearing the sound, whenever the pulse is, is getting faded, you're hearing the sound dub, and this is the S2. Now we talk about the S3, this is known as ventricular gillow. It's the third hard sound and you can only hear it in the middle of the middle third of the diastole, contributed by blood. This sound is not produced by the valves, it's produced only by the blood. Now if you try to see the mechanics of this sound, <coughs> you know that at the middle two-thirds of the diastole, three, three equal part and into the middle two-third, we can hear this. Now it's because of the rushing of blood from the atria in the diastole, the blood, blood fills from atria into the ventricle. So the blood is rushing into the ventricles and first you cannot hear the sound. You can only hear the sound in the middle two-third. The reason is that when when the blood comes from atria to the ventricles, it starts to accumulate here. And when it, it starts to accumulate onto the walls of the ventricles, it, it makes the elastic tension. And this elastic tension is is necessary for production of the reverberation. This, uh, when further blood comes into the ventricles, this collection of the vibrations, these vibrations are known as reverberation. And oscillation is produced by the blood when more and more blood reaches to the ventricles. The, the time period is very short and the quality is weak and rumbling, you know, it's not a clear crisp sound. The frequency is low, that's why it's inaudible, you cannot hear it even with a stethoscope, only heard at middle two-thirds of the diastole. And, and this is an important point, physiologically S3 is present in children and young people and at the older age it indicates cystic heart failure. Now if you try to see the side of location onto the chest and it's, it's located over the apex of the left ventricle where you can find the apex beat onto the mitral area. Now we'll have general discussion about the S4. This is known as atrial contraction sound and the second name is atrial gallop. It's a four heart sound and at the ending of the diastole before S1 the sound is produced and is contributed by blood, not by the valves, only by the blood, similar to the S3. Now if you try to see the mechanics, how this sound is produced. So this is produced at the ending part, part of the diastole. At the two third, it was S3. And at the ending part, this is atrial gallop. And what happens is when the atria contract, 
this rushing of blood from the atria and blood strikes onto the ventricles and the sound is produced the mechanism will, is very same the only difference is that in this phase your atria are going to contract while in the sc there's no contraction of the atria now we'll see some features the time period is very short and the quality is weak you can see this it's not a crisp sound here the frequency is low 20 cycles per second that's why it's inaudible again you cannot hear it only heard at the middle to uh, at the middle of the dsd indicates left ventricular hypertrophy in older patients now on the test where you can find this you can find this over the apex beat it's the same area fifth intercostal space medial to the mid clavicular line where the apex beat is present and uh, there are some deviations of the harsh sound now these deviations could be intensity could be split sound could be gallop rhythm or some extra sounds and these extra sounds include murmur and pericardial rub now these murmurs could be systolic or the diastolic murmur the murmurs are the some extra harsh sounds then are normally not present in the heart these could be pan systolic that occur all the way during the systole early systole only in the in the initial stages of the systole late systole and mid systole early mid and late diastole but in the diastole you don't get the pan and these are further classified into two main types the aortic stenosis mitral regurgitation these are for the systole one and mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation for the diastolic one but well, first we'll discuss about the intensity now these are the deviations of the heart sounds so there could be different intensities of the heart sounds and not, not normally these intensities may increase or decrease and sometimes there's splitting of the sound for example the sound splits into double sound for example instead of the normal lub dub sound you hear the sound la lub da dub so there's splitting of the sounds. However, this could be common in normal young people, while some other reasons could be the physiological or pathological. When you see the physiological limit, this splitting of the sound could be about 0.05 seconds. Now, in physiologically, whenever you inspire and whenever you inspire the air, there's more negative in intrathoracic pressure. That's why your air rushes into your lungs. And uh, there's more venous return more of the blood will accumu accumulate into the right atrium and from there into the right ventricle. So when these right ventricles contract, more of the blood reaches to the pulmonary arteries. So there's delay in the closure of these valves. So whenever there's delay, the sounds are split, okay? And, the, and pathologically, you can say that the right or left bundle branch block, there's delay of the impulse to be traveled. And so there's a splitting of the sounds now, systemic hypertension and pulmonary hypertension cause the splitting of the aortic component or the pulmonary component. This is the pulmonary component and this is the aortic component. Now, if you try to see the gallop rhythm now, it's called a triple rhythm. You, have you ever seen the horse galloping like this one? This is called the galloping of the horse. Now, the heart rate is above 100 per minute, 100 beats per minute, this addition of fourth and third heart sound to the first and second one, you hear the voice, instead of the normal lub dub sound, you hear the voice lub dub dub, lub dub dub, lub dub dub, like, like a horse is galloping. Now there's some extra sounds, these include murmurs and pericardial rubber. First we'll discuss about the pericardial rubber. This is because of inflammation between the two, two layers of the pericardium. We know the pericardium has two layers. So as a result of inflammation, there's friction and rubbing of the layers. So when these layers are rubbed with each other, it produces the sound of leather-like. Now we have the murmurs and from the murmurs, we move into the systolic murmurs and the type of systolic murmur is aortic stenosis. Now in the aortic stenosis, as the, as the, name, as the name show, there's stenosis, narrowing of the pathway. It's the loudest murmur. It's because of the stenosis of aorta. Now, in this, the blood is injected in turbulent form because of the stenosis of aorta. So the nozzle effect is formed in the diastole, just like a water is passing through a thin nozzle and the loudest vibrations are formed and transferred to the aorta and other vessels during systole. Sometimes violent vibrations can also be felt onto the chest with the hands. And these violent vibrations are then called thrills. 
Now the second type of this cystic murmur is mitral regurgitation. In the mitral regurgitation, as the name shows, there's regurgitation in the mitral valve. So the blood flows back from the cystic and there's higher frequency squishing sound and this is transmitted up to the apex of the heart as in the as in the graph you can see this is occurring in the cystic period. It's similar to the aortic regurgitation but it is in systole. Now we come to the diastolic part and from the diastole we we try to study the mitral stenosis. In the mitral stenosis, as the name shows, there's stenosis of the mitral valve. So there's difficulty in passing of blood from left atrium into the left ventricle. So no solid pressure develops in the atrium. So whenever there's no solid pressure, so no sound, so sounds can be heard. Uh, and these sounds are abnormal sounds. Weak and low frequency sounds can be heard. Now the last type of the diastolic murmur is aortic regurgitation. In the aortic regurgitation, there's regurgitation of the aorta. As a result, there's difficulty in passing of blood and you can see this aortic regurgitation is occurring into the diastolic period. Weak and low frequency sounds are heard. Now, we'll explain some force and frequency graph. You know that inaudible frequency is from 3 to 4 to 20 cycles per second. Here you can see that this inaudible frequency is from the three to four and the maximum limit is 20 per second. So you cannot hear sounds that fall in this range because these are inaudible to your ear. And threshold of audibility is from 40 to 520 cycles per second. And you can hear the sound only in this area. This is your audibility range. So the murmurs, we observe in the heart are like this. Most of them fall in the inaudible range here and few of them fall in this audible range here. So that's why most of the heart sounds and murmurs are difficult, difficult to observe even with the help of the stethoscope, but phonocardiograms can detect them. So that was all about heart sounds and murmurs. Thank you.